one of the biggest advances uh, in AML uh, has been the um, the recognition uh, that there are recurrent somatic mutations uh, that uh, are actually involved um, intimately with the pathobiology of the disease. Uh, many of these are so-called driver mutations in cytogenetic abnormalities uh, that lead to um, the development of acute myeloid leukemia. One of the earliest ones that was discovered, of course, was the uh, FLT3 or FLT3 uh, mutation, uh, which often occurs either as an ITD, an internal internal tandem duplication, or a point mutation either in D835 or now newly recognized uh, residues along the FLT3 gene, uh, leading to activated signaling, ligand independent activated signaling of the FLT3 protein, often leading to proliferative disease um, uh, in these patients. We know that FLT3 ITD mutated AML tends to have uh, short remission duration, uh, short uh, relapse-free and progression-free survival, and uh, as a result, a short overall survival. We know that they do respond well to chemotherapy, but the relapses are frequent, and therefore overall survival has been uh, diminished over time. We also know that high allelic frequency of FLT3-ITD also correlates with worse outcomes, and, and a low FLT3-ITD ratio may represent an underlying uh, non-dominant clone and typically associated with a slightly uh, less adverse prognosis. Um, several years ago, uh, after multiple uh, lines of development, uh, the first FLT3 inhibitor was uh, approved in the front line. Uh, that's mitostorin uh, in combination with 7 plus 3 for newly diagnosed patients with FLT3 mutated AML, demonstrating a real survival benefit in that patient population, cementing 7 plus 3 plus mitostorin as the frontline therapy standard for newly diagnosed patients with FLT3 ITD mutated AML, demonstrating improvement in survival. Um, uh, subsequently, other FLT3 inhibitors have been developed, including gilteritinib, another type 1 FLT3 inhibitor that is active both in the ITD as well as in the point mutations. Um, we also have the use of serafinib, which has been used for ages uh, as a type 2 inhibitor, which mainly is able to control the FLT3 ITD, but does not have activity in the point mutations. Uh, newer investigational inhibitors, such as quizartinib, a type 2 inhibitor, uh, is, is currently under development. Uh, Cronolinib is another one, and there are many um, other um, FLT3 inhibitors currently uh, in development in the phase one, phase two setting. Um, Giltritinib, which is sort of the second uh, FLT3 inhibitor approved, uh, was approved as a single agent in patients with relapse and refractory FLT3 mutated um, uh, acute myeloid leukemia as a single agent. Um, and this was um, demonstrated in the ADMIRAL trial showing a survival benefit in that patient population when compared to chemotherapy. So I think that is uh, being studied or uh, being used in the in the relapse refractory setting, but certainly uh, it's a well-tolerated drug and it is uh, being considered in combination with chemotherapy now in the front line for newly diagnosed patients. And so we await that data to see if uh, certainly gilteritinib in combination with chemotherapy is also something we can use in the front line. Uh, it's being studied or has been studied in combination with lower intensity therapy in frontline older patients. Um, again, the final data is not out, but there may be a suggestion that um, perhaps that combination may not be uh, the one showing overall survival benefit, but again, we wait the data. FLT3 inhibitors have also been incorporated very nicely in the post-transplant maintenance setting. So patients who have uh, FLT3 mutated AML who achieve remission, consolidation, receive stem cell transplant, but are still at risk for relapse. And certainly the use of post-transplant FLT3 inhibitors have been shown to improve overall survival. Uh, the SORMAIN trial uh, demonstrated in a phase two randomized trial, a survival benefit. Uh, subsequently, a Chinese, a large Chinese study demonstrated an overall survival benefit among patients with FLT3 ITD mutated AML with the use of serafinib. And currently, both mitostorin and gilteritinib are being studied, um, and the, the data is, is being presented in preliminary fashion, showing possible signal of efficacy in the post-transplant setting. So FLT3 inhibitors have now become a mainstay in the treatment of leukemia, not only in the front line, as I described, but also in the relapse refractory setting and also in the post-transplant setting. Uh, our studies are ongoing now, combining uh, the newer FLT3 inhibitors with chemotherapy, both high and low intensity, as well as with other targeted therapies such as venetoclax. Uh, so I think the future is bright and other FLT3 inhibitors are being developed, again, with different side effect profiles, different um, uh, ability to inhibit um, various mutations, not only the ITD and the common D835 mutation, but other resistance mutations as well. So we look forward to that.